And the question for this week is, how do you discuss sexual desire in adolescence and without shame? Welcome back to another episode of Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car with you each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. So why are conversations about sexual desire important? It's a good question. And it's not really just a question to do with adolescents. This is for children of lots of different ages. Because when we talk about desire, we're really talking about self-awareness. We're talking about openness. We're talking about how we speak up for the things we need or we want. And we're also talking about how we push back against the shame that might keep us quiet or small or not be able to speak about what we want. If any of you are in Ireland or in other places for the world that matter, at time of recording, the program Normal People is being shown on RTE and I know other people can watch it in other parts of the world on Hulu. And that show demonstrates or shows an example of um, one particularly young person who is able to speak up for what she needs, like Marianne in episode two. I don't know about the other episodes, but episode two, she is very clear that she would like to take off her clothes and she would like the person she is with to take off their clothes too. And she's really straightforward about it. And this is um, an opportunity for us to see in on television an example of what it looks like for a person to speak up for what they need and to tell someone that they're interested. So how do we talk about adolescence and desire? The first point is to say that it's normal for a body to feel something if it's attracted to something or someone else and that each of our feelings of desire can be completely different from our friend or the neighbor across the road. So the first point to make is that we all desire different things um, in different ways. No one um, is broken just because they don't feel the same as everybody else. So the first point to make is it's really normal to feel some sort of desire. Now, not everyone feels it, but if we do feel it, that's perfectly fine. And we may be interested in another person who no one else finds interesting. No one else desires them or thinks they're sexually exciting, but we do. And so one of the messages that we give to our young person is that we all are interested in different people and that's okay. The second point to make is that desire will feel different for different people in their body. And if we've never experienced it before, we might know, not know what it feels like. If you have a penis on your body, for example, that may be a sign that you have some sort of interest, but equally, it might be a completely random erection that you're feeling that has nothing to do with what you think is attractive or not. I remember when I was in my late 20s, sitting in a kitchen with someone that I thought I was attracted to, and they were over at the wood-fired stove preparing some sort of food. And it was in that moment that I noticed my body responding, right? It was really quite obvious that I was very, very interested in this person. I'd never had that, ex that experience so strongly before in a situation which did not feel sexual at all. And I think sometimes that when we talk about desire, oftentimes um, young people might think that desire happens if you're dancing or if you have your clothes off. But one of the great messages we can give our kids is that desire can happen in all different places uh, when we're doing all different sorts of things. And desire isn't necessarily something that we have to do anything about. We can just enjoy the sensation for what it is inside our body. The third idea that I have is that when we talk about desire with adolescents, it doesn't necessarily actually have to be a conversation like I'm having with you right now. We can send them copies of tweets or Instagram posts, or we can recommend TV programs that show a particular sort of sexual desire that we think is interesting. We can um, text them or we can have conversations with other adults who we trust and they trust 
in their company, we don't necessarily have to talk about these things directly face to face or side by side. A lot of information can be given in families through overheard conversations and indirect things like that is one of the wonderful ways to talk to adolescents when they are starting to feel and quite rightly a little bit awkward about all these sort of things. It is absolutely age appropriate for a teenager to want more privacy and not want to talk about these things with us. And so following on from that, if you have younger children, it is really useful to be able to talk about all sorts of desires and how we can enjoy the company of our friends on play dates and things. And that's how children discover who they like to be with. And when they get older, they're going to find out different ways that they discover who they're going to enjoy being with. And that's the way the human body works. It changes over time. So let's recap. Desire is a normal thing. It is different for every person and it might feel different in your body to what it feels like in someone else's body. We also know that uh, we don't necessarily have to do anything about when we feel desire for someone else. And finally, we can talk to adolescents. I'm doing air quotes here. Talk to adolescents in ways that is not actually talking by using social media and overheard conversations. And we can even talk about desire with much younger children and help them understand that that is another part of being human. And that's sitting in a car for another week where I've answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And while you're here, can I ask for your help? Would you like, repost or subscribe to Sitting in a Car? This helps other parents just like you to find the support and information they need to do this part of their parenting even better. And that makes the world a better place for all of us. Thanks. Bye for now.